Hey there everyone, Hitesh here and welcome to another video where we are going to deep dive into what are reactive databases. Now, reactive databases are a new breed of databases which actually throw up a event uh, which is server driven or rather you would call as database driven whenever there is an update in the database or a database row or a column in the database it automatically shoots to all the people who are listening to this. Now, this is not a really new concept. You might have already seen the pub sub model, the publi publisher and subscriptions uh, kind of a model. But understanding the reactive database is a core essential part because a lot of new databases are coming up. They are not new. Firebase already did that years and years ago, but they are getting popularity again. I was about to make a video on this topic and I already did a video on my other channel. So I thought why to leave this channel and have a small discussion about reactive databases so that you can understand them. So first of all, let's talk about reactive database. And after watching this video, you will have no problem in understanding as well as explaining what are reactive databases and how it works. Now, reactive databases are not anything new. They are already available to us. And it's not like you have to have a fresh set of databases. Although there are few fresh set of databases which can be called as purely reactive in nature, but it's not like that. You can actually do all of this using the Postgres as well. I will show you using a little bit help of the Postgres and the triggers in the Postgres plus a little bit of web sockets. So yeah, that can also be done, but we are not here that part. We are here to understand what are reactive databases and what it goes for. And we have just these five uh, points we have to go through and we will be fully kind of a master in that, at least in the theoretical part. So the first one is event driven by nature. So this is the most important, one of the most important part. What is event driven by nature? Really simple going with this. So we have this client and this is how usually it happens. So this is our client. We do have another one, which is our server. So this is our server. The usual aspect of the client and server inside uh, any model that you have is let's just say you made a request to the server that, hey, I want to perform a task A. Now this task A is taking a little bit of the time that, hey, it's a task, let's just say video processing, you're transcoding a video or you are encrypting a video with your DRM technology. In that case, what you have to do is, let's just say we are processing a video. Processing video. Now, as you know, processing video is not a joke. It takes really a lot of time. But user or the client also wants to know that when the processing is all done. So one good approach or one of the approach is it again keeps on asking you whether the processing is done, whether the processing is done. And eventually there will be a one request where we'll say that A is being processed. So I can just go ahead and say that processing is done. Processing done. The moment it gets the processing done, it is all happy and it says, hey, your video is ready. That's the whole game. This is how usually it happens. What happens in the event driven architecture is we have this client and we will have this server as well. You go ahead and again, the step processing will remain exactly same that you reached out to me to have a process. Oops. You have a process that I want to come on. Don't do it like this. You have a task that you want to perform. And again, this same task is video processing. So we'll just go ahead and grab this video processing. But you don't keep on sending the request. We actually, whenever the process is ready, we just inform through the server. And there are a lot of ways uh, we can do that via webhook as well. Reactive database is one of the another way. The whole thing is that when the processing is done, this is actually informed by the server. So this is a server driven event or as we call them as event driven. So this actually again says exactly same. So when the video is ready and we can see all of the other network calls are not required in this case, only once you send this, hey, this is all ready. And then uh, we simply say, hey, processing is all done. So event driven by nature, that means you don't have to do any polling. You just, anything gets update. You are a subscriber of the event, you get notified. They follow the push based communication. So instead of the pull based communication, which is the part one where we are actually pulling the data or keep on trying to pulling. This is push based where server actually push the data whenever data is required or something is required in the communication streams. That's why it does. And you might have seen this thing. Push based communication is actually used quite a lot in things like WhatsApp or Slack or Discord. This is all where push based communication happens. Another part is built for modern apps. Modern apps really require these kinds of things. If you think a little bit about all the collaborative app, like Excalidraw, the software that I use for drawing all these diagrams, this is designed for this modern application or modern usage. 
In case you haven't heard about it, Figma is also one of such application where multiple people can actually work on the same board itself. Applications like Google Sheets or Google Presentation or Google Docs, they are all part of modern application and they all work kind of in the reactive database. Again, reactive database doesn't mean this is one. This is, this is a whole philosophy of thinking about the application. Uh, sometimes it's more over towards event-driven architecture. Sometimes it's even leaning towards the uh, database, reactiveness of the database. Anything changes, database immediately notify to your front end. So this is a way of how you write your application. So again, classic examples are collaborative apps. Even dashboard could be like that, immediate, uh, like that, immediate updates. Uh, Figma is one of them. Google Excel Sheet, Google Excel Sheet, Google Sheets or uh, Google Docs. These are all examples. And in some of the cases, they are very scalable and efficient. I have tried a couple of times scaling the sockets. Scaling the sockets is not that easy after a certain point. Once you reach onto a threshold point, sockets actually give up on you. And you have to use so many of the trickeries to make sure that it keeps on working and keeps on handling the traffic that you want it to handle. But in the case of when you actually get a database directly like that, yes, life is super easy and you don't have to push anything at all all of your events or most of the time all of your UI is also written in such a way, again, reminding you that there is a different way of writing a UI for such application. Of course, it's React and everything, but the way how you call your use effects and state hooks and everything, it requires a little bit of the planning in advance. But once you do that, it actually sometimes can make your life easier. Again, remember, everything is a use case based situation. Some places, these kinds of applications, these kinds of databases do really make a lot of sense. And you can avoid a lot of things, a lot of jargons and nuances on all of that. But in some cases, this makes sense. So what are the examples in the market? I'll give you some of the examples that I prepared in the uh, graphics as well. But some of the examples that you already have seen, at least what, what I have seen is Firebase. Firebase was one of the first one which I actually used in the production. So Firebase Real-Time DB. This is not Fire Store, rather to say. Firebase actually gives you the Real-Time DB. This was the original database which Firebase offered earlier. Now they offer or they focus or everybody focuses much more on the uh, Firebase Fire Store, which is another database, but Firebase Real-Time DB is another one. So this is the first one which I saw and I used in the production for the very first time and I saw the power that, okay, this is pretty nice. Another thing which I just mentioned that you can actually replicate exactly of this using uh, Postgres plus triggers and plus WebSocket. You will see a lot of code repository actually uses this. This is not easy to implement, but they actually do exist. One of the another one that I'll show you directly as a database that exists is a Rethink. A Rethink DB. This is another database which is almost real time, not almost, it always is real time, the open source database for real time web. So yes, they have their own way how you actually need to go through it. But if you want to make polling system, uh, live player score updates or anything like that, these kinds of databases actually makes your life easier. So yes, uh, web plus mobile apps, the multiplayer games, real time marketplaces, streaming analytics, connected device, they have their great use cases being mentioned up. This is a database which is well suited. So if you are building anything which requires real time updates or anything, maybe instead of relying constant pulling, maybe your application is whole dependent on this thing. So in that case, RethinkDB could be one of the thing. Another thing that you're going to see these days getting popular is Convex, which is pretty great service, but this is a backend as a service. They are not database, but their database actually uses one of the reactive databases you'll see. Convex is the open source reactive database for the app. But in case you don't want to use their services, which are, they are pretty good, you can use them, then you have direct option that you can have the Rethink DB and can have it on your server and write the code accordingly. They have great examples as well. So the option is in front of you, whichever you want to choose, maybe Rethink DB, maybe Convex, however you want to go, or you can actually use Firebase Real-Time DB. This is still a rock solid uh, choice for these kinds of example. So finally, last but not the least, some of the graphic diagrams, which always helps to cement down the concept uh, before moving forward. So first of all, polling versus reactive flow. So in the polling, somebody is asking for, hey, did I got the table? Again, I know the example is in uh, Hindi, you don't probably understand it much, but let me just give you a walkthrough. Ignore the text, 
I will still give you what's happening. I'll give you the analogy. So the first one is polling based system where somebody is constantly keep on asking, will I get the table in this restaurant or is the table free? Is the table free? On the other hand, you get a notification on your phone whenever the table is vacant, you get a notification that table is ready for you. So the second system is usually more preferred, but again, in some cases, not in all the cases. These are just precise examples procured so that you understand the reactive databases. WhatsApp, everybody knows that we don't have a refresh button on the WhatsApp. The data automatically comes up and we get notification for that. Nobody likes to hit the refresh, refresh again and again on the WhatsApp. Nobody will. Live dashboard, I'm not sure you have seen that or not, but a lot of da uh, dashboards, especially the stock market da dashboards, and these days even the admin dashboard prefer to have uh, not a refresh button, but rather automatically updating the things. If somebody is buying a new value, just go for that. You might have seen Stripe dashboard in case you work in the SaaS business. They actually do use in some of their dashboard is no refresh is required. Automatically a new row is added and they just pull the data. And then this is also another example where there is a board written here that whenever the table is ready automatically. So again, you could have an app or you could have a board which says table is ready instead of users constantly asking the waiters, having the, day, having the table ready, a board there will make much more sense. Again, these are very procured example, but at least now you have a new knowledge of reactive databases and you are not just relied on a couple of databases like MySQL, Postgres, MongoDB, they are great. I love them, but they are not the only choice. If you want to build certain applications which are dependent too much on real-time real -time data or real-time notification or something like that, RethinkDB or Firebase or real-time DB or maybe Convex are one of your choice. Uh, so that is it. Hope this video has added some value to you. If yes, do hit the subscribe button and let me know what else you would like to see on this channel. I would love to make more videos. That's it for this one. Let's catch up in the next one.